Hi kids, I know it's been a while, but I'm back. And I picked a movie out of the bucket two years ago before I lost my studio, by the way. How do you like my new studio? I have a wall. Tonight's movie, actually movies, Mysterious Island. There's probably been three or four of these. So we're going to go with the two I've seen. We'll start with the 1961 Columbia Pictures release, directed by Cy Enfield. I don't know him. We start out with a group of Civil War soldiers, both Union and Confederate, somehow managed to jump onto a hot air balloon in the middle of a battlefield. I don't remember why there was a hot air balloon in the middle of the battlefield, but there was. They get caught up in this current that carries them out over the sea. Now you would think where the Civil War took place that that would be the Atlantic Ocean. But no, it's the Pacific Ocean. And somewhere out there in the big blue Pacific, they land on a tropical island, kind of like Gilligan's Island. You would think this island would be uninhabited, out in the middle of nowhere. But when they land, there's a fire on the beach. To me, that's a pretty good indication that it's not uninhabited. Well, anyway, they set about exploring. And they, they find giant plants. They find oysters the size of footballs. So they, they set about chowing down. Yeah, they're, they're filling their guts. So, but it seems the, the oysters are not the only thing that's overgrown on this island. As they find themselves uh, <laughs> in a battle with a giant crab. I mean, RV-sized? crab maybe a little bigger so one of the soldiers gets snatched up by the crab and he becomes dinner well after after a little while they wander around they find a wealthy snotty socialite and her daughter uh, they get washed up on the beach I don't know where the hell they came from. I mean, out of nowhere. Uh, so they all take they all take shelter in a cave, <clears throat> and it says here the women make the place home. I don't recall them like furnishing the place, but I don't know. Maybe they hung some shells on the wall and. I don't know, maybe they built some furniture out of bamboo. Who knows? More adventures follow. <laughs> they are attacked by a giant chicken, which kind of runs with the theme. Why not a giant chicken? And then pirates. Probably because there were some pirate costumes left over in the wardrobe. Mysteriously, the pirate ship out there in the bay, lagoon, wherever, it sinks. 
And it's as though some unknown force is helping our soldiers and this wealthy socialite and her daughter survive. Well, it's really not a mystery for long because one of the soldiers and the niece, niece, daughter, niece, sorry, One of the soldiers and the niece stumble upon the Nautilus, a submarine. And Captain Nemo makes his appearance. That's what this whole movie's about, Captain Nemo. Maybe you heard of him. Well, Nemo tells them that the island's about to blow. Boom. The volcano is rumbling, it's set to go. So they hatch a plan to raise the pirate ship so they can sail away. I know that sounds really easy, right? You've all seen Gilligan's Island, right? Okay. So this is how they're going to do it. They're going to swim down to the sunken pirate ship patch the hole, and then fill the ship with air so that it will rise up to the surface. So they strap on their seashell scuba gear. Yeah, I know. Giant clamshell on their back, full of air, I guess, and a tube to breathe the air. <laughs> yeah. Well, more adventures. So, overall, I'm going to say Harryhausen, Ray Harryhausen. Uh, his animation's great. It's a little bit dated by our standards. But for the time, it was a spectacle. Um, and I love Ray Harryhausen. I really do. <clears throat> Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, Jason and the Argonauts. All can't miss. But this story, which was written by Jules Verne, is just outright laughable. Um, yeah, I, it's just a fantasy story, sure. But, come on, people. The balloon took off from... Civil War battlefield and it drifted across the Atlantic, Africa, the Indian Ocean, and Australia to get to New Zealand? That's a long trip. And they made it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> so, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe they... Maybe they went against the jet stream? Like a salmon swimming up river? No, they didn't do that. That's impossible. We already mentioned the giant seashell scuba gear, so I'm not going to revisit that. This movie was a symphony of ridiculousness, but it was kind of fun, kind of like Disneyland. I don't know about Disneyland now, but like Disneyland when I was a kid back in the 70s. It's a three-ring circus on the Late Night Picture Show tonight. And now we'll move on to the 2005 Larry Levinson, not to be confused with Barry Levinson, who might make some good movies. Larry Levinson's. And this is a TV movie. And it's directed by Russell Mulcahy. And it stars Kyle MacLachlan, Patrick Stewart, and Gabriel Anwar. Anwar. 
So some heavy hitters. So the story is pretty much the same. Other than the chicks hitch a ride with them in this one. And instead of Ray Harryhausen claymation, we have some really bad computer effects. I don't even know if it was called CGI in 2005, I'll be honest. But they were bad. Like, yeah, they were bad. So we had a giant cobra, crow, spiders the size of VWs. But, again, the story is just ridiculous, and despite the all-star cast... This is far from all-star material. I'm like shaking the screen here. I'll figure that out. Don't worry. I won't get you seasick. So this one this one runs a lot like a Doctor Who episode. In fact, it's Doctor Who meets Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what they should have called this movie. All the stars in the world are wasted on this piece of crap. I give this one one ring. One. Now, next week... I'm not quite sure what's going to be on the Late Night Picture Show. I got a new monkey because, see that? That's candy. And Charlie Woodurf ate the candy out of my old monkey. <laughs> He's nine now, by the way. And he'll be co-hosting with me at some point. Look, look. I'm going to have co-hosts from time to time. Mostly Charlie. Well, I don't know. We'll see who I can trick into watching these shitty old movies with me. <laughs> or as homework to join me since I've already suffered through most of them. Um, so yeah, Monkey here. This one... My old one got the side eye, I think. This one squints like me. Normally, I would pull a movie out of this bucket for next week. But I've recently discovered that I need to... I need to double up. I've got around 300 reviews written and <laughs> I will die before I get through all 300 if I only do one a week so we're gonna start having double feature night here on the late night picture show two for the price of one so I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna pick those double features Maybe let me know in the comments. Do I pick them out of the bucket randomly so that they're just a mishmash of everything? Maybe one black and white, one color. Who knows? Or do I try to uh, pair them up as I would want to pair them up? You know, what I think would make a good midnight double feature at the drive-in. I'll give that some more thought. Anyway, this has been the Late Night Picture Show. I'm Murph Wadurf. That's another thing. I'm going back to being called Murph the Clown. When I was in the circus, I was initially Murph the Clown. And then later on, when the internet and 
email and all of that came around, I became Murph Dot Wadurf. Yeah, it's a play on my name. Okay, my name is Dermot McMurphy. And my middle name's William, so W. I'm sure you can figure that out, <laughs> Woodurf. Anyway. The Late Night Picture Show with Murph the Cloud. Murph the Clown. I'm not a cloud. So, thanks for joining me. I hope you had fun. Subscribe. Like the video. Like. Don't like the video. Whatever. Leave comments. Hey you is is perfectly acceptable form of address for me. And I will see you eh, next week, maybe two weeks. It's almost Christmas, so we'll see what happens. Good night, kids. <laughs>